I use for this blanket Caron Latte Cakes by Your Inspirations. And the color that I use, let's see, right here, it's called Claret. This is a bulky five. Caron Latte Cakes usually recommends a size K hook in crocheting. And Caron Cakes uh, Latte Cakes actually uses 530 yards per cake. It took me three. I used three of these cakes to make this blanket. Now, please forgive me. I don't know where my measuring tape is. So I have no idea how big this blanket actually is. But I will tell you this. So if you're making this for a child, the size that I use or did, you know, it's pretty much perfect for a baby and then a small child. If you want to make it, you know, for an adult, then pretty much that's up to you, however big you want to make it. I would say for this blanket, I've actually sat on the couch and put it across my lap and it's basically reaching down to my ankles, covering my thighs, and it's going up to my mid -jure. So it could also be if you're going to do this size, but then I can't even tell you the size because <laughs> I don't know where my measuring tape is. But the stitch that I did this blanket in is called the crunch stitch. And as you can see, the crunch stitch gives this pretty cool, like they're just like subtle little dots, you know, and I, as I said in my previous video, and I talked a little bit about using Caron Latte Cakes because of the fact that, you know, a lot of people don't know what to do with it because they want to do a great stitch because the yarn itself is so soft and so beautiful. And then they're just like, yeah, but if I do something fancy, we're not going to see it. But nope, as you can see, you see little bits of textures with those little, you know, what I call like little speed bumps. They're cute. They're super cute. So anyway, so grab your hook and some yarn. Now you can do this blanket um, and with any yarn. You don't have to do the Caron Latte Cakes, you know, if you're just like, I'm not into that. That's fine. But I'm actually going to show you how to do this with another Caron Latte Cakes, just in a different color. Okay. So with the crunch stitch, basically it takes multiples, let me see, it takes multiples of twos. So any amount of number, you know, that you, or however big you're going to make it, just remember that it needs to take multiples of twos. And then after you get your numbers, we need to add one for the base chain. So you make your, um, your knot, I call it a knot, <laughs> you know, or your magic ring. And then go ahead and get the number of, you know, stitches that you want to start with and then meet me back here. Remember, multiples of twos and then please be sure to add one for your base chain. Once you got the length of, you know, the blanket that you're going to make, the lift the the desired length. I cannot talk, y'all. I just got off of work. Once you get the desired length of your chain, remember multiples of twos plus one. What you're going to do is you're going to skip the first two stitches, okay? So you're going to skip one. Sorry about that. One, two. And then into the third stitch, what you're going to do is you're going to do a slip stitch immediately. So we're going to go in here, pull through, pull through. Now that first two chains that you had skipped, that counted as your first half double crochet. Remember what I said in the beginning, this stitch takes half double crochets and slip stitches. That is all this pattern is okay so now since we created the first slip stitch and the next of course you are going to put in one half double crochet so that's yarn over and into that next stitch pull up a loop and then yarn over right and go through all three and that is your half double crochet and the next stitch you will put in 
a slip stitch. Pull that loop all the way through. And there you go. Now, the thing about slip stitches is that it took me a long time to learn how to control my gauge because a slip stitch is already going to be tight. So remember, be very careful of how tight, be very conscious, should I say, of how tight you make your slip stitch because you're going to need to work your hook back into those slip stitches that you make, okay? So again, so we just created that slip stitch. We're now going to go in and do another half double crochet. And that's all it is, right? So next chain is slip stitch. Okay. And a half double crochet. And you're going to do this all the way down to the end. One thing that I found out, oh, see, one thing I found out about this is that this pattern is very easy. It is a one row repeat. The problem is, is that you get so comfortable and you start picking up speed. And then next thing you know, you're like, oh my God, did I do two half double crochets or did I do two slip stitches? And trust me, it's very easy to forget. Like once you get on a roll, you know? So do this all the way to the end and then meet me back here. Remember, one slip stitch, one half double crochet. When you get to the end, you should be ending on a slip stitch. Here's my half double crochet and here's that last chain. You're going to go in and do a slip stitch, okay? Once you're done, turn your work. And now you're going to chain up two. You will always turn your work and chain up two. That is how you're going to begin every row. Now, remember, you ended on a slip stitch. So here's your half double crochet, because basically this is how this works. Every time you complete a row and you turn around, when you begin the next row, you always know that you want to skip this and that you should be doing your first slip stitch in the half double crochet. So remember, you end it here. That was your slip stitch. I know it's fuzzy. And then the next stitch, you have to find it. You do a slip stitch. Okay? So... Now you're going to do a half double crochet into a slip stitch. Now, depending on how tight you made your slip stitch, you know, if you did it at a good, like not too loose, but you know, basically just right enough to get your hook in, then you won't struggle. So now you're doing a slip stitch in the half double crochet below, yarn over and do a half double crochet in the slip stitch. See, and I know I have problems. I got a little bit carried away and I had to, see, I got to work it in there. So again, slip stitch will always, you should always be doing a slip stitch into the half double crochet below. And then when you're ready to do your half double crochet, you should be working in a slip stitch. Now, the other trick about tricky thing about slip stitches in a pattern is that because it's so, you know, it's, it's pretty much, it's small. And so sometimes people get thrown off because they don't even realize that they skipped over the slip stitch if they have to work into it. So again, now maybe this isn't like the best yarn I have shown y'all this with. But I wanted to work with the Caron Latte Cake. So I just got finished my half double crochet, right? And then another slip stitch. Yarn over. And you know what, guys? I'm actually... Yep. 
going to, when I get down to the end, I'm going to show you on regular yarn as well. Because I don't want anybody saying, no, I can't see it. See, I just messed up. Is that a half double crochet? Wait a minute, hold up. See, that's what I'm talking about. So I went and did a half double crochet into a half double crochet. Do you know how I realized that it was the wrong thing? Because it was way too easy. It was way too easy, see? That's where the half double crochet should have went, and now a slip stitch. Again, yarn over. You might have to pull your work apart if you're using Caron Latte Cakes. You see how hard that is? So that's all it is. All you're doing is alternating. Okay, and so now I'm going to do one double crochet into that slip stitch, and the end gets really hard, and you need to end on a slip stitch every single time, and this is going to be a poor example. That's why I'm going to actually do this, basically start over again with a clear yarn, that you can see like a different type of yarn now again you know i thought it would be a good idea to show y'all how i'm working with the caron latte because some of most of you probably will use the caron latte cake but i don't want to discourage anybody so if you give me one second i'm just going to pull some regular yarn so you can see what it is i'm doing because i'm scared now since i'm sitting here doing this you know that y'all are going to be like i can't see it you know, it doesn't matter how close. <laughs> so give me one second. Okay. So here it is again with regular yarn. And you guys know when I'm doing the tutorial, I'm just going to do a miniature version. So just like with that Caron Latte Cakes, that gray color, I made a chain of 17 for me. So it was two plus one. So again, here we go. So you guys can actually see this again. So one, two, okay? And when you're first starting, you go into that third chain and you enter it with a slip stitch. You start with a slip stitch. And I know you guys are like, oh, this is so much better. We can see it. <laughs> Next is your half double crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop yarn over and go through all three and that's for my new beginners okay that's a half double crochet next chain do a slip stitch by pulling up a loop but pulling it all the way through be very very careful and conscious again of how tight you're doing your slip stitch okay next stitch just a half double crochet and this yarn splits so now i'm struggling <laughs> And then a slip stitch. Half double crochet. And then slip stitch. Oops. See? And that's the other thing. That's what gets tricky about it because after you do the half double crochet, by nature, we want to do what? When we begin the next stitch, you want to yarn over. And that's not, you know, a slip stitch. It took me a hot second. And I almost said, you know what? This, this is too confusing. You know, but I tell you what, after, you know, maybe if the first couple of rows, man, I started flying. Because you actually, I don't know, it's like your mechanics, your hand-eye coordination begins to fall in line. Oh, this was bad yarn to pick y'all because it's so it's splitting so bad. <laughs> okay, half double crochet, and we're coming to the end. And what did I say before with that Caron 
latte cake, you always will end. You should always be ending on a slip stitch, okay? So now I'm turning my work again. And remember, you will start, it is a one row repeat. You will start every single, you know, turn with two chains, which counts as your half double crochet. You will not work into that first stitch right here. You want to go right here into the second with a slip stitch, which is your half double crochet. I know I'm saying all of this over again. I feel the need to repeat it being that I needed to show y'all on a different yarn, okay? So you got your slip stitch, and here's the, you're doing a half double crochet into that slip stitch, you know? And you might have to turn your work over a little bit. Ooh, get up in there. Here's your half double crochet. And I always knew, like I said, I always knew if I was right on point. Because when you do your slip stitches going forward now, you'll notice how easy it is to get your hook in. Right? And then, you see what I'm saying? Look, there's the half double crochet. I mean, we're putting in a half double crochet into that slip stitch. And it's nice and tight. It's right there. Look, yarn over and you're going right in there. Now... I did this very loosely, so my yarn is really splitting, y'all. Okay. So, slip stitch. Half double. Slip stitch. Half double. Uh, slip stitch. Ooh, that's going to be tight. I can already see it. Ooh, too tight. Don't be discouraged. I don't want y'all saying, ooh, sorry, that looked like that's too much work. No, it's not too much work. It's just a matter. I, I tell you what, this is a good pattern. If you're not a person that, you know, you your gauges, you know, is just off all the time, this is a good pattern to learn how to control your gauge that is for sure and see this is horrible right here because i have a tendency to crochet a little tight sometimes so slip stitch okay now i can show y'all what happens at the end so then the hat okay so here we go so it looks like you're like okay well there's not much left to do there are two stitches here it is right here look this is a stitch, and then right there on the end, you see how I'm doing it? That's the top of the last stitch that will tend to hide. And I talked about that in the last video about like how I was just like so impressed that I got my side straight. Oh, this is going. This is a little tough. I'm not going to sit here a lot of y'all. In the beginning, it was like tough. I was just like, dang it. I'm trying really, really hard. Come on. I be look, I was like, come on for my and look. And then I didn't even I didn't even get it under both loops. So you kind of really gotta manipulate it. It's not hard. It's not hard. Don't there we go. Now y'all see I got it under both. Right? That's the half double crochet. And then right there is the top of the turning chain. I'm going to Put my hook in. Oh. And then do a slip stitch. Whew. That was like, oh. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm going to turn. Okay. Now, doesn't look like much now. Do a couple of rows with me. One, two. After you turn, you don't go into this one. That's your the slip stitch, and you just put a double, I mean, a half double crochet on top of that slip stitch. Remember, the two chains count as a half double crochet. So that means what? Go here, and it's a slip stitch. That's all it is, folks. That's all it is. So work up a couple of rows, right? And actually, I'm just going to stay with y'all until we get to the 
the end on this one because I, I want to point out how that end can hide from you. Okay. I just, I really like this stitch. It's so simple. It's just frustrating to get my, my, um, coordination, you know, when you're working with a slip stitch. Every other stitch. Okay, and now here we are again at the end. So I just did a slip stitch, right? So I'm going to do, I have to pull it out. There's two stitches left. You might have to turn it, okay? Now, if I turn it, you can kind of see the two stitches on the end. I mean, I really had to pull this because I was, I was just like, where is it? Oof. It's under those. <laughs> and it will get better the more you go. Please don't be discouraged again, folks, because I, I, I crochet really tight sometimes. And then right here at the end. Oh, my God. Mm. And that's not even going on the both. Hold on. This yarn is splitting so bad. I'm embarrassed. I am really embarrassed. Oh, okay, here we go. Okay. A slip stitch. Okay. Phew! Man, I was struggling. So. Okay, so my 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 edges right are still straight now there's a little curve but they're still straight so again i'm going to work up a couple with you guys and then we're going to come back and we can see what my swatch will look like okay so remember when you get to the end you turn do two chains up and then skip that first stitch because that's where your half double crochet is when you did the two chains up and you go into the next stitch and start with a slip stitch okay so you begin with a half double crochet by chaining up two and you will always end with a slip stitch so work up a couple rows and let's come back and do a little comparison okay so i did a few just a few rows and so that's where you can kind of see the cobblestone well, I said cobblestone, sorry, because it reminds me a little bit of cobblestones, but this is the crunch stitch, okay? So I probably used the wrong size hook for this yarn because, you know, you can really see the holes in this. This is Caron uh, Simply Soft Latte, um, not Latte, but the regular Caron Simply Soft yarn. So, and I use the size what was this? Oh, that's why I use the size J for this. I don't think I'm supposed to use a J. But anyway, that's what it starts to look like. Now, you will not have these holes, okay? Because look, let me bring the blanket back over here. So, as you can see, there are no holes in this. And this is up close and personal. There's no holes. I just used the wrong size hook. Okay? But you can still see your little bumps here in the road. So let me bring this back over. So one more time, okay? Now I am hoping that as you guys started doing a couple of rows, right, that it was getting easier for you to find your slip stitches. So I'm just gonna do one more so that now we can see like, oh yeah, it's a lot easier to find. So after I chained up my two, remember I skipped that stitch and here is the double crochet below. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> One, two, there we go. Insert your hook and you do a slip stitch. 
this I'm sorry guys this this yarn I mean I love Karen I don't know why I always pick the prettiest yarns that split so I did the slip stitch and now I'm going to do the half double crochet okay the slip stitch okay and for the beginners you know your slip stitch you'll always know it below because it looks like a little hole that's hiding that's what it looks like and you're probably like that's not a stitch it is a stitch <laughs> okay and then the half double crochet right wait a minute uh oh I'm <laughs> sorry see what I mean that's what I'm talking about we just did a slip stitch I lost my coordination just because I stopped and told y'all I had a slip stitch and I was about to do another slip stitch the little hole, the slip stitch, the half double crochet goes in. God, this is probably the worst tutorial ever. <laughs> okay. Okay, so when I see the slip stitch, I know I need to put in the half double crochet. Ugh. So tight. Okay, you see how big that is, nice and roomy? That's how I know the slip stitch is going to go in there. You see how nice and tight that is? That's how I know I'm going to do the half double crochet. Yep. Slip stitch. Half double crochet. Woo! Who needs to practice their gauge? I'm up here telling y'all to be careful. You see how tight mine is? <laughs> that is super tight, man. Slip stitch. Nice and easy. The half. I'm like, oh, Shania, put your bag into it. <laughs> okay, slip stitch. Ugh. Okay, and again. Okay, now since I got some worked up, here we go. We are about to do a half double crochet. You have two stitches left. There, you got to pull that in. Pull it, you know, to your left. Yarn over, we're doing a half double crochet, and it's going right in there. And make sure you get it under both loops. Oh, this is so tight. Look, I want to say, folks, don't try this at home, but I'm trying to teach y'all something. <laughs> okay. Successfully pulled it through. And now... Here we are at the end. Do not turn around. See, that's how you know. That's how I know. You see that's still a little bit sticking out? Then you're like, oh, wait a minute. There is my stitch. And you will do your slip stitch. Okay. It's almost like you, you're kind of like going down a little bit to catch it. But, yep. Here we go. And then slip stitch. And that was your end. Woo! That was that was something else. So yeah, that's what this is. It is the crunch stitch. Okay. <laughs> okay. I can't even get it out. I know. I was just like, oh my god, I'm super rusty on tutorials. I, I was struggling with that. Because as I, you know, I intended to do that whole entire tutorial with this guy right here is my gray Caron latte cakes. I'm just going to say latte cakes. I'm tired of saying Caron. Y'all know that. Right. And then I was just like, okay, let me try to, <laughs> let me try to like make it easier for y'all to see and then do it on this one. It's okay. Right. I hope. Be honest with me. So, you know, I really hope that it was clear. You know, some people don't like to work in slip stitches. A lot of people only use slip stitches when they are pretty much, if they don't want to do their, like, do a needle, like, to sew their pieces together. If they have to sew something together, I usually prefer to use a slip stitch. And they think that's pretty much all the slip stitch is for. But there are a lot of patterns or stitches, you know, that have slip stitches included. 
you know? And so basically, like I said before, to me, the crunch stitch is really a really, really good pattern, you know, to practice your gauge. So you're practicing and, you know, like, your, well, your tension, in other words, you know. And as y'all can see, like, I have to, if I repeat the row, like what I did with this blanket, and I was just like, oh, and I was trying to really work to get in there. I was in the right stitch. It was this that I was just like, oh, see, this is what happens, Shine. You need to be more conscious and a little bit looser, right? So that's all it is. That's all it is. All you're going to do is slip stitches and half double crochets. All you're doing is alternating. Just remember this key rule. For the crunch stitch, okay, it is a one row repeat. Whenever you do a slip stitch, you should be working into a half double crochet. Whenever you do the slips, whenever you do the half double crochet, you should be working into a slip stitch. That's the crunch stitch because there is the, I think it's the, I'm looking at it right now. The florette stitch is I, almost identical. The difference is, is that when you turn, whenever you're doing a slip stitch, you should be working into a slip stitch and then half double crochet into a half double crochet. But I will do something else eventually in the florette stitch um, no time soon because it's going to feel like I need to get the crunch stitch out of my system because if I try to do something in that florette stitch, it's still too fresh in my mind and I'm going to start crossing them and this is just going to be crazy. But anyway, so look, again, let's take a look. Oh, and... Do you know what I discovered, y'all, when um after I made the last video and I went to go fold this up? Okay, I told you guys that in the beginning of this video that I use the color uh claret. So when I was looking at this blanket, still admiring it, right? I, I don't know if y'all gonna be able to see this. So do you see that shade now? Now keep watching because I'm just gonna pull it over right? Keep watching. Keep watching. Oh, right there. See what happened? Look, you see how my, it's like a different entire shade. Like, so like, so y'all can see what I'm saying. You're saying, Sean, you're making up stuff. Hold on. Okay. There we go. Look, can y'all see the difference in the reds and everything? It's the same color. It's the same color. Be very careful. And this is just a tip. This don't have anything to do with the tutorial. This is a tip. When you buy your yarns, especially something like this, and you know what? Even in variegated yarns, okay? I guess, you know, like maybe it was like too much saturation. I was about to say too much dye, but I mean too much. Maybe some parts of the you know, the wheel or the factory, whatever they do, it's more saturated in that color, right? And then you get, you know, that's, that's what you get. Basically, let's look at that again. Look, you see that? Y'all really can see it now. Like this was one cake, this, this area, you can tell this was one cake. And then when I started my second one, I mean, I didn't notice it at that time, you know, until I was showing y'all this, but I just wanted to say when you're, when you're picking out your yarns and this is just for any yarn, right? And you're like, oh, I got a big project and you're picking it out and you're like, I'm gonna make it all in this. Now I still have, let me say one, and I think I have five more of these. So now that's going to make me go back and, and kind of pull them all out underneath this light and set them on a table. Yeah. So, I mean, it's still pretty, but yeah, I'm just giving y'all a warning. Heads up. Mm. So what y'all think? You think it's something you could do? Do y'all think it's something that you would not get frustrated with or want to choke in the end? <laughs> <laughs> I once, like I said, once you do a couple of rows and I'm talking about just 
you might really need to concentrate in the beginning. And then after a while, I was just like, boom, boom, boom. And I just knew which one I was supposed to be doing. But it, it can trip you up if you get too, too relaxed or whatever. And then as you guys see, can see, I did not put a border on this. No, didn't put a border at all. Okay. So that's it. God, I feel like I should be doing like something like some song and dance for y'all, but that's it. Yeah. Tell me what you think about this pattern. If you make it in the latte cakes, you know, I still have an Instagram account. <laughs> I, and if y'all know, I don't like being on social media like that. I, poor Instagram account. It just gets no love or whatever. Eh, nobody. I, it's just out there, right? So again, if you want to do this and then you just want to show me what you did, you know, feel free to um, go to Pinky50 Hooks. That's Pinky50 Hooks on my Instagram account. And feel free, you know, to tag me, follow me, do whatever you want. I'll follow you back. The account is private. I had to turn it into private over something that happened. Yeah, something happened. And I was like, okay, people are getting out of control. <laughs> Somebody tried me and I was just like, I will make the account private. But if you go ahead and you request, I'll check you out and then I'll give you access. And then y'all can share what you've done you know, with me if you want. And if you do it in another yarn, please let me see it. I, I want to see it because as we all know, different yarns will have different results, right? Even if you're using the same stitch. So, yep, that's it, folks. There is the, I think I'm going to call this blanket Fields of Strawberries. Yep, true statement. I'm sorry I look crazy tired, but I had a long day at work. So anyway, I'm so happy to be back again. So thank you for watching. Hey, and if this was your first time watching this video, first of all, or stopping by and looking at my channel. So again, um, I am Shania Lancaster, and this is my channel where I can show you how to do some fun crochet projects, you know, here and there, and y'all get to act, see me act silly, and then... I like to talk about different things and yeah, yada, yada, yada. So anyway, if you like what you saw today, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell notification button so that you can get all the videos right when I put them out. Okay, I'm just starting up again. Yeah. All right. So thank you guys for stopping by and I will see you soon to teach you the embossed rondel stitch that's what it's called susan woods i fi figured out what the proper name for that stitch was it's called embossed rondel yep 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 so you guys have a great evening take care and i'll see you next time bye bye <laughs>